Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Running complex web applications on shared devices has always been a little bit tricky because a lot of modern web applications are storing data on the client in order to achieve a more seamless and more responsive user experience. Well, Twitter was no exception and apparently they didn't quite understand how Firefox is dealing with this data. Now, the application, of course, can also delete the data itself or it can rely on the browser to do so. Apparently Firefox is keeping data that the application stored within the browser for seven days and in Twitter's case this data included for example private messages. So no big deal really if you're the only user of the particular computer, but if you're sharing this computer, an other authorized user would be able to retrieve these messages from the cache on the system. It's actually an issue that we talk about in our Defending Web Application class, in particular when it comes to local storage, sort of a JavaScript API that's quite often used for this kind of storage. But then again, I believe there are plenty of applications other than Twitter out there that are storing too much data on the browser and it's probably a good idea to occasionally just clear out the data. This is data that's stored in addition to cookies. So this does not necessarily mean just cookies but definitely includes cookies as well. And if you were around 17 years ago, you may remember SQL Slammer, one of the big worms that, well, attacked Microsoft SQL Server. Sadly, I guess we haven't learned since then and people still expose Microsoft SQL Server to the internet. Now, the latest news here is not SQL Slammer. I guess that finally sort of died out, uh, but weak passwords, in particular for the SA account. Once an attacker has access as SA, which is short for system administrator, then they have essentially remote code execution capabilities to the SQL server. The current attacks going around install mostly crypto coin miners on affected systems. Uh, Researchers looking into this recently found about 3000 infected systems. Apparently it takes less than a week for about 60% of unprotected systems to be exploited. So sad that we still have to talk about these issues, but please, please do not expose SQL Server or any database server for that matter directly to the internet. And of course, use strong access controls and authentication. And yes, we don't get away from vulnerabilities in Zoom, the video conferencing software. This time it's the Mac user's turn. Patrick Wardle, the famous Mac security researcher, took a look at Zoom and he found two vulnerabilities. First of all, a little bit an odd installer that uses a pre-installed script that typically is supposed to check if you have the required software to actually do the install and that can lead to a privilege escalation and also to some unauthorized access to the microphone and camera. Now I have to say Zoom is really quick in updating these vulnerabilities. Double check in the morning when you get started and walk into your living room to fire up your computer to check that you have the current version of Zoom installed. I've seen them release like almost multiple versions a day as they are fixing and sort of playing whack them all with these security vulnerabilities. And of course, attackers are trying to jump onto all these economic stimulus payments and the Department of Justice now has released a statement warning users of various scams that are out there. From most US citizens that will get the $1,500 payment or whatever it will be, it will be deposited automatically in your bank account. So you don't need to apply for anything. You definitely do not need to first send a payment via PayPal or fill out a form on some random non-government website. 
Now, one security feature in web browsers that keeps causing problems is the idea of same origin policy or identifying the origin of a particular website. Simplicity speaking, the origin is usually referred to as everything sort of up to the first single slash. So it's the protocol, it's the host name, and it's the port number. But it can be tricky to accurately sometimes parse where the origin of the particular content actually is. And with the most recent set of security updates, Apple patched a vulnerability in Safari that allowed websites to confuse Safari as to the origin of the code when it comes to access to the camera. So the way this would be exploited is if you gave permission to a particular website to access your camera, an attacker can load JavaScript into your browser that essentially is misinterpreted as coming from the trusted website so the attacker's JavaScript code has no access to your camera. Again, this was patched in the most recent update, so please update because there is now a proof of concept exploit out there and a detailed description of what this flaw exactly entailed and how it worked. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.